Uh, as we mentioned earlier in the program, Black Lives Matter co-founder Patrice Cullors stepped down from the organization recently, not enough to get her out of trouble or hot water or escape the criticism because some of her supporters or maybe former supporters are speaking out against her, including the mother of Tamir Rice, a 12-year-old boy shot and killed by Cleveland police back in 2014. Culler says she st still stands by her des decisions and calls the allegations against her right-wing attacks. To talk more about why Culler's decided to step down, we want to head out to our D.C. newsroom to Paul Kaminar with the National Legal and Policy Center, a nonprofit that reports the ethics of public officials. Paul, why is she truly stepping down? Well, we think she's stepping down because it's, she can't stand the... Uh, glare of the light of scrutiny of all the finances you have like 90 million dollars coming into this network of black lives matter groups um, and it's we've uncovered there's like six or seven different names of these groups um, we there's a political action committee that she has and um, it, it's one where you know she's spending tons of money uh, 3.2 million on four luxury homes, uh, one in Malibu and a 98% white neighborhood. And uh, she has a pack where she paid uh, the father of her child $150,000 to put on a Zoom event uh, on election night that was absolutely a disaster in terms of the way it was being produced. Uh, the audio didn't work, video didn't work, Experts said at most that should only cost $20,000 to do that kind of work. So there's a lot of questions about self-dealing that she's been doing with all these different uh, PACs and organizations that she's running. One of them, uh, they had a Malibu retreat for some $26,000 in a luxury uh, resort. Uh, so it's unclear where everything's going, but there has to be a full audit because even the chapter heads are asking for full audits of the finances. Yeah, do you find it interesting, because I do, uh, that a, an avowed Marxist is buying one multi-million dollar home and then another multi-million dollar home and then, hey, look, we got a bargain on this multi-million dollar home. It was raining money from some direction, was it not? Well, that's true. And, it, and it's ironic that she's a self-proclaimed and trained Marxist but yet she really strongly believes in the capitalist system, apparently, with all these uh, properties she's buying and money sloshing around, et cetera. So, so it, it is a very problematic. Like I said, you have uh, heads of chapters of Black Lives Matter in New York and Oklahoma calling for a full audit of all the money to see, you know, the old saying is follow the money and see where this all goes. Then she says, oh, I've got, I'm doing uh, uh, some of this pro bono. Uh, I've got a book deal working. I've got money from other sources. But it's not really clear uh, where, where it's coming from. And we have, for example, uh, the 2019 IRS uh, report for the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation, where she's listed as an executive director, but she's listed as uh, not being paid. Uh, which is maybe okay, but it listed her spending 0.00 hours a week for the group. So nothing. this is not jiving at all. And so I think the, uh, this is catching up with her, and that's why she decided to step down last week, even though she said, oh, well, I really was thinking about this back in December, but I didn't tell anybody, but now's the right time. So uh, there's a lot of questions. The National Legal Policy Center is going to get to the bottom of this. We're looking at maybe filing complaints with the IRS, with the Federal Election Commission, and some state agencies, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to uncover uh, how this money is being misspent. You said she doesn't like having the spotlight shine on her, but isn't this also now shining a spotlight on BLM in general? Because we have folks saying, wait a minute, I thought this was to help the communities and at least help the families who were victims, but no money seems to be going to communities or victims whatsoever. Well, she does come back and say that she is giving money to some of these victims and some of these communities, but that seems to be uh, uh, sort of an afterthought recently. Uh, I mean, there's still... $60 million they're sitting on. 
The other interesting thing about this is that they were funded uh, by this organization that is a charitable organization called Thousand Currents. It's a very liberal uh, organization that has millions of dollars, and they were being what's called a fiscal sponsor of the Black Lives Matter. And, and so they were basically funneling the money to them, but uh, it's still hard to find out where the money ultimately ended up. And by the way, uh, one of the members of the board of directors of Thousand Currents is none other than Susan Rosenberg. Now, where do we hear that name before? Well, Susan Rosenberg was convicted in 1983 of bombing the U.S. Capitol, the Senate building, with the Weather Underground and other radical groups. And what happened to her? Well, President Bill Clinton gave her a commutation. So what did she do next? Hey, I'll work for this group called Thousand Currents since they're helping Black Lives Matter. So it really is pretty amazing how this all network works together here. And Paul, the last thing I want to ask you here is that I've been seeing a lot of information where uh, the support for Black Lives Matter has dropped precipitously over the last few months, uh, from somewhere around 60% to just 40% in this country, in numbers I'm seeing as far as uh, the general, um, I don't know, image of Black Lives Matter seems to be uh, getting pretty well tarnished. Um, yeah. Do you think the, the glow is off the pumpkin, for lack of a better term? Well, yeah, I think so. Uh, and, and like I said, there are uh, members and heads of Black Lives Matter chapters who are complaining about the lack of transparency by the national group. And I think uh, uh, after all the uh, riots that we saw uh, that was inspired by the Black Lives Matter last year uh, and, and some of these questions about how the money is being misspent, et cetera, I, I think the uh, public is getting wise to how uh, this group is, is running, being run by Patrice Cullors and, and her uh, cohorts. Paul Kamenar, mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us from our D.C. studio there. It looks beautiful out there. and appreciate what he has to say about what's going on with Black Lives Matter. Definitely, we're going to have to follow the story, Steve. Uh, we certainly are. In other news at this hour, police...